Hi, I'm Renee from Martha and Me, and I've come to you today with a flock of little friends I crocheted at a scrap yarn, and I think you'll have fun learning to make these, and you'll be able to use up some scrap yarn as well. I made it out of scrap yarn, as I said, so you'll see the sizes are different because, of course, the weight of the yarn is different. Now, today what we'll do is I'll demonstrate with my tube yarn because it's a little bigger and I think you'll be able to see that better. And this is the bird I made out of the tube yarn. I think he's just adorable. So to start, you will need, as I say, the tube yarn. I have this blue color, steel blue, and then I have some leftover yellow yarn, goldenrod yarn to make the beak and the feet. You'll need a scissor. You'll need a hook the size of your yarn. And you'll need a large eyed tapestry needle with a large enough eye to accommodate the yarn you've selected. You will need a stitch marker. And I used a safety eye for my little bird's eye but you don't have to, and I will give you one t little tip. My bird has a safety eye, but do you see how the back of the safety eye sticks out? So this will not work if you want to lay this flat on something and you'll have to do something else. I've seen it done with just a circle of felt glued there, and that would be just as cute. But for today, I'm gonna use a safety eye because it's just so much quicker to show you. We're gonna start this project with a magic circle. Do not despair. Many, many people, myself included, had a hard time learning this, but I think I've got a very easy way. Take your yarn and lay it across your palm, the tail end of the yarn, lay it across your palm. And now take the working in and wrap it around and make a circle and you're pinching the intersection of that circle, and here you've got it. But I have got my working in underneath, and it's just laying behind, but across the circle. I take my crochet hook, and I go in, and I pull up slightly that working into the yarn that is intersecting that circle. Now, this all sports its own weight, there's nothing here to it. Kind of drop all that conglomeration of stuff you've got there and bring, pinch this top now, press it to your crochet hook just to anchor it down and bring your working end up and get in your position to hold your yarn. And I still have that circle and I just go in, yarn over, and carefully pull through that little loop and now you have a magic circle. Now let's try that again. You've got your yarn across your palm. You take the working in and wrap it around till you make a loop and you pinch the loop. Now you go in to your circle and gently pull up, not too much, just gently pull up that working into the yarn. And now you take the intersection and you pinch it down to your crochet hook just to hold it firmly. And you can drop this tail end now, but you want to pick up on the working end and get your hands in position, your yarn, and you just yarn over and you pull through that loop and you have a magic circle. Now, from here, we're just gonna do things exactly the way you've learned them. And we're gonna do a single crochet, and if you've learned that before, you just go into a stitch. In this case, we're going into the circle, but you just go in, do yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, and pull through both of those loops that you just had on your hook. 
Now, we need to do six of them, so we'll go through slowly so you can make sure that you can see what we're doing and you'll know how to do this. So I'm going to go into the circle. I'm going to come back up and get yarn over. And I have pull that up and I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through both. Into the circle, yarn over, pull through. I'm back to two loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through both. Now I've done three stitches. I have to do six. Into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Now I'm sitting here talking, so I've already forgotten, but do you remember how to figure out how many stitches we've done? You can turn this over and look at all your V's. Your V's are the top of your stitch. I have one, two, three, four, five. So I've done five stitches. So I told you at the beginning I needed six stitches, so we'll do one more. Into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Now I I'm going to show you exactly why this is called a magic circle because we just have a row of chain stitches here basically don't we so you take the tail end that you've been crocheting over all this time really and you just give it a tug gentle but firm and you pull it into a circle and look at that magic circle it's beautiful now I'm not going to pull it as tight as I could have. We will pull it tighter, but it's easier to find my very first stitch if I don't have it too, too, too tight. So to find my very first stitch, remember, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that was the first round. This is only a four round object and you're just going to think this is so quick and we've already done the first round. Second round, I go into each one of those stitches, all six stitches, and do two single crochets. So here we go. We'll find the first one. And sometimes it's a little hard to get your hook into the first one, but we did it. You're gonna pull through, yarn over, pull through again. Same single crochet you've just been doing uh, into that magic ring. And now we're going to do two in each stitch. So I'll go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Now, I did forget one part of this, which is so important to me. You need to mark your first stitch in each round. Otherwise, you get to the end of it and you won't know if you're at the end of it. And if you haven't counted, six stitches is pretty easy to count, but what if you have 18 stitches or something? You don't, 28, you don't know. So I did two into that first stitch. So here's my two. So this is my very first stitch and I'll take my stitch marker and mark that. And you'll see how important that is when we get around. Okay, there we go. So now we have five more stitches to put two single crochets into. Go into the stitch, and when we go into the stitch, we take both of the legs of that stitch, of that V. So I've got both of those. Pull through, pull through two. Go back into the same stitch. Get some more working yarn here. Now I'm into my third stitch, but again, we're going to need to do two into that stitch. So here we go, the second one into that stitch. And by doing this, we're gonna double the stitches. So we will have 12 stitches when we're done here. And 12 stitches is easy enough to count. So that won't be too hard, but I'm not gonna really have to count them because I put a stitch marker in. I gotta make sure each time I go into that stitch that I'm going under both legs of that stitch. 
both legs of the V. And here we go. Looks like this is my last stitch in the original row. And the reason I know it's my last stitch is that I've marked my first stitch and here it is, the very next stitch. It's got a stitch marker. Now look at that circle. How would I have known that was the end? I might have just kept on going around and around and around. You can't tell where the first stitch is or the last stitch unless you've marked it in these circles. So we can remove this now because we know we're at the proper point. Okay, now that was row two. So for row three, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. In the second stitch, we're going to do two single crochets. The third stitch will single crochet. The fourth stitch will put two. We're just going to repeat this. The odd number of stitches are going to have one single crochet in them, and the even number are going to have two. So let's go in to our first one and do our single crochet. This time I'm not going to forget. I'm going to mark that, the first stitch of that row. And when you mark it, you go under both legs of the stitch. And then the very next stitch is an even number. It's the second stitch. And I will want to put two single crochets. So I go in, do a single crochet go into that same stitch with another single crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that all around. The third stitch, it's an odd number, so I only do one. The fourth stitch is an even number, so I'm going to do two. And I'm just going to go around. Doing my single crochet in the odd numbers and my two single crochets in the even numbers. Now I've kind of forgotten a little bit, so I have to go back here and I can see that I've done two single crochet in that, that stitch and one in this one, so I'm going to do two in the next one. Crochet is so forgiving in that sense. We can see what we've just done. We can redo it if we have to, and we can pull it out if we have to without too much damage. This is an even number, so I'm going to be doing two. Now I'm going to be doing one in here and two in the last one. So this is the end of our row three. And we have done the body of the little bird. Now row four is where all the magic happens because we are going to be shaping the head and the tail area. And it's so fun because it just magic. It just happens just by manipulating some of these stitches. So we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches to start to our head. So single crochet one, single crochet in number two, and single crochet in number three. And then the fourth stitch gets all the action here because we're going to do four double crochets and one half double crochet in this fourth stitch. Now don't despair if you don't know how to do those because I'm going to do them very slowly and you're going to see how that works. So for a double crochet, we just start with a yarn over before we go into the stitch. So get your yarn over, go into that fourth stitch there then a yarn over again and pull through. And this forms three loops on your hook. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go through two of those loops 
yarn over and go through two more. So we need three more of those because I told you we needed four double crochet. So remember, yarn over, go into that same stitch because we're going to do all of them together. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So we need two more. Yarn over, go into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through till we get three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now one more double crochet, yarn over, into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now the next one in that same stitch is going to be half double crochet. And this is the fun one, I think, because you start exactly like you did the double crochet. You do the yarn over, you go into that same hole, you pull through, you get to the same place. You have three hooks, uh, loops on your hook. You yarn over, and instead of just doing through two, we're going to go through every one of those. And that's how we do a half double crochet. It's not quite as tall then of a stitch as the double crochet. So next we half double crochet in the next two stitches. So remember, yarn over into that stitch, yarn over, pull through until we have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three of them. One more, yarn over, Go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through till we get three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three of those. So now we've done our two half double crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch in the next three stitches. And to do a slip stitch, it's very simple. You just don't really, you're just moving along flatly without making any height. So we go in. We don't do yarn over anything, we just go in to the stitch. We grab the, we do the yarn over, pull through, but instead of doing a stitch, we just keep on pulling through. Go into the stitch, grab your yarn, and pull through everything there. And one more. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through everything. So we've basically moved our yarn along without making many, um, without making much of a height difference. Then we're going to do one double crochet and we did yarn over for double crochet. We go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, through the last two. Now this next one, and we're making the tail now, it will become obvious when we're done. We're going to do a half double crochet and then a double crochet in the next stitch. So remember a half double crochet? We did yarn over, we go into the stitch, then we do yarn over, pull through, and we to make it half we go yarn over and pull through all three. And then we're going to do a double crochet in that same stitch. Yarn over, into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have the three loops, but since this is double crochet, we're going to do yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is the entire body of that little bird. So to tie this off, you do a stitch like you're going to do a chain stitch. And so that's yarn over and pull through, but you make you just keep on go and pull that loop. Take my scissor and cut off a nice little length there. And then pull it all through and tighten it up. And I don't know if you can see this. Make this out. This is basically the little body of the bird. See his head goes up here and then his tail comes out here. This was our main circle that we started with and you can see 
how that's going to look like a little bird. We're going to get a beak and some feet on him. So at this point I usually tighten up because we need to get rid of these threads. So I tighten up and that closes up that magic circle and that hole and it looks lovely. You don't have that gaping hole there. And But we need to get rid of these ends and we need to tie it off so it doesn't um, fray, it doesn't come loose. These things are going to be handled. You might put this on a child's backpack pull. You might just do all sorts of things with this and you will want that to be tight and firm. So we take our tapestry needle at this point and this tube yarn is fairly easy to thread if you have a yarn that frays, um, you would want to pull it up over the back of your needle and make a little flat spot so you can work it into the eye of the needle. It's not so hard on this thread, but it can be hard on some. So we're going to work in the back of our object and you know it's the back because that tail is sticking out of the back and what we're going to do is just just play it by eye and you're going to go in and out of some of these stitches weaving all different ways so that you lose that yarn it's not visible and it won't unravel I will tell you to be careful and not go into yarn you need to go under the actual stitch because it will make a big mess if you can't get and tube yarn is good for many things but it's kind of hard to do this without going through and you go in a couple three different directions so that it won't unravel it just makes it like a knot if you go through two or three different directions and you don't have to do you don't have to go crazy, but you're going to want to you're going to want to go in and out and in and out different directions. I'll go in another direction now because I see some nice big easy looks like these are easy to get under, and I want to make sure that I don't lose my threads. When you've done what you think is enough, in and out, in and out, then you just take your scissor and being very careful not to cut any of those stitches, I kind of take the needle, I'm sorry, the scissor and slide it down the yarn and snip. And then when you kind of pull it out, the yarn the end of the yarn disappears we have to do the same thing on the tail end and this one we have to be a little bit more careful because we don't want to distort the little tail that we've just made and it's it's not hard to be careful but you just want to be cognizant of the fact that you could be distorting that tail and maybe you don't care maybe you would like a quirky little bird And since there's no exact science here, you just have to find a stitch and go under. Whoops. And go back and forth a couple times without distorting that little tail. Okay, I'm going to cut mine off here and I have my little main body of my bird. Now for the beak that's really simple and the feet are very simple and what, how we do that is by 
I just eyeball where I might want the um, the beak and see this natural remember that spot that we did the four double crochets and then one half double crochet it made a large hole here and that's a kind of a natural place for the eye and that's where I'm gonna stick my stick my eye so I thought that maybe the beak should be just opposite of where that eye is so let's in this case I have my yellow yarn that I'm going to use for the beak and I've eyeballed where I'm going to put the beak I go down from the front under the two legs of the stitch and I just grab the yellow yarn and I pull it through and I take both the tail end and the working end so that I have two strips of yarn here. I do yarn over and I pull it through and that anchors that. Now I can drop my tail end and work it naturally like you normally would with just your working end. And that's all I'm going to do is to take a single crochet in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And that is going to be my little beak. And I'll finish it off just the same as I did the body. I'll take a faux chain stitch, keep on pulling that out, clip it, and then pull the end out and tighten it up. And that's my beak. And I will, isn't that cute, that little beak there? Now, for his feet, let's see, how do you think he's going to stand? If I have an object here he's standing on. So I would think you can put him any way you want. He might be getting a drink of water, dipping this way. I think I'm going to have him standing up. And so this is where I'm going to want his little feet. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way I did the beak with one slight difference. And so I'll start with this little foot area. I'm gonna go in to this, under the stitch, and I'm gonna pull that yellow yarn through. I'm gonna take both the tail and the working end, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and that anchors that change of color. And then I can drop the tail end. And now I'm gonna go into the very next stitch. Single crochet. And the very next stitch, single crochet. Now this is obviously not an anatomically correct bird. This is just gives a suggestion of feet and a beak. Uh, I'm going to finish this off by that faux chain stitch. Pull it through. And now I have a beak and a little suggestion of feet. And I won't do the um, weaving in of the ends on this video because we've just demonstrated that but this is exactly how the bird ends up this is the little beak area and this is the little feet area if I had to do this over I would move this little feet under his little body a little bit more but I think he's just adorable I did pop in the safety eye and I'll point out again that he really has too uh, too much of a point there um, for many purposes but for the demo I thought it looked adorable but just get a little piece of black felt and glue that on there or if it's not going to be handled too much a little piece of black construction paper and you can make a whole flock of these little birds and I think your kids are going to like them your friends are going to like them you can put a pin backing on them you can use them for all sorts of purposes and I just fell in love as soon as I saw them